Thank you. Our uh, fearless leader, Pablo, couldn't be here tonight, so you're stuck with me. Uh, my name is Michael Casey. I'm the film critic for the Boulder Weekly. Welcome to the International Film Series and tonight's showing of Kiru. How many of you are here seeing it for the very first time? Excellent. Okay. I'm going to give you two pieces of information that aren't really explained in the movie that we might provide some context and then we'll get on with the show. Um, tonight's movie is about a protagonist, Kanji Watanabe, who is diagnosed with stomach cancer and he is going to die. We know this because it's going to tell us at the very beginning. The reason this is important is because in 1952, in Japan, they had a practice of non-disclosure. So if you had cancer, it was a death sentence. You couldn't fight it, there was no cure for it, there was no way to combat it, so the doctors wouldn't tell you you had cancer. They would tell you that you had a mild ulcer, any whatever you would like. And that was code for you were going to die in six months. Um, this was a prevailing um, sentiment in Japan up until like the mid-80s, which is why the movie will tell us that uh, Watanabe has cancer, but nobody else in the movie will tell him directly. He's got to figure it out himself, and this is what kind of turns him into this night of resignation. Um, in the West, we have this ideal that you know, if you, if you can change your own course of your own fate, of your own destiny, you can fight something, you can find a way out, you can beat the odds. Not the case here, not in Japan, and certainly not for the book that the movie was based off of, which is the Tolstoy novel, The Death of Ivan Ilyich. Um, second point, stomach is very important in Japan. In the West, we tend to think of the heart as the core organ. Um, we tell children to follow your heart, to listen to your heart. Um, when somebody, uh, you know, tramples all over you, they break your heart, they pull it out, they, they step all over it. Even though it's an organ that's a muscle with four chambers that just pumps blood, we ascribe a lot of significance to this organ. That organ of significance is the stomach in Japan. So when the movie opens and it shows us an x-ray of a stomach riddled with cancer, it's more than just Watanabe's stomach riddled with cancer. It's actually Japanese society. Uh, Akira Kurosawa and the two writers he's working with, Shinobu Hashimoto and Oragani, are very concerned about where Japan is in 1950. They lost, uh, Japan lost the war in 1945. You have an allied occupation. Um, but before that, even before they get into World War II, there is this sentiment that Japan might be losing its way. Uh, there is a series of horrific incidents in Korea that really kind of read this home. But there's also a couple of earthquakes that happened in uh, Japan in 1903, and then I think there's another one in the Thames, that drive this point home that maybe we're not following the right path. So the fact that Watanabe, who is the aging bureaucrat of Japan, has cancer is significant because the young children that you're going to see in this movie who are dressed like Westerners, who are speaking English, who are singing Happy Birthday, and have um, a mechanical toy ro uh, rabbit that is from the West. They're significant because they're not infected by this cancer that is infecting J uh, Japanese disease. That, I think, might form the core of Ikiru and why this movie persists until this day, is that it's not just the empathy of Watanabe, although it is very much that, as you watch for the next two and a half hours, you will really feel this man's plight to want to contribute something to his life, to the world. But it's also the filmmakers behind the scenes who are wondering what are the youth going to contribute to this corrupt society that will get us out of this cancer and into a proper future. So, with that, enjoy the show.